Set in New York in the 1940s, Arthur Miller's two-act play, Death of a Salesman, covers a 24-hour period with a requiem set several days later. In the introduction, Willie Loman comes home early from the road for lack of sales. He nearly crashed the car several times. Mental confusion is a new norm for Willie. Willie's adult sons, Biff and Happy, are home. Biff has just returned from the West, unsettled and unsure of his career path. Willie slides back and forth between present reality and flashbacks. His mind takes him back to moments of optimism and hope about the future. But Willie is also haunted by his infidelity. He also flashes back to his brother, Ben, now dead, who traveled to Africa and became rich as a young man. Ben's success is a nagging reminder of Willie's own failures. As part of the rising action, Linda explains Willie's deterioration to her sons, including the fact that he lost his salary and is secretly borrowing money from Charlie. Linda also tells them he tried to kill himself in the car, and she shows them a rubber tube she found in the basement which suggests Willie might asphyxiate himself. She pleads with her sons to reestablish their relationships with their father. A family talk about Biff's future becomes a pie-in-the-sky plan to seek out an old employer for financial backing to start a sporting goods store with Happy. At the end of Act One, Willie decides to ask his boss for a salaried position in New York. The next day, both Willie's and Biff's meetings go poorly. Bill Oliver refuses to see Biff and Willie's boss fires him for lack of sales. When Happy, Biff, and Willie meet that night to celebrate, nobody feels successful. Biff and Willie argue, and the sons leave Willie in the restaurant, overwhelmed by memories of Biff's discovery of his affair. The play's climax makes clear that Biff's disillusionment stems from the shock of his father's lies and infidelity. Back at home, Willie's confusion continues as he plants seeds in the backyard. In the falling action, Willie has a delusional conversation with his dead brother, who reminds him about his $20,000 life insurance policy. Willie and Biff have a final confrontation, and Biff, in tears, says he's leaving the family for good. Moved by his son's emotion, and in the thick of his hallucinatory conversation with Ben, Willie decides to carry out his plan. After everyone else has gone to bed, Willie leaves the house and speeds away in the car. Act two ends with the family gathered around a grave. In the Requiem, the Loman family and Charlie reflect on Willie's life. Biff recognizes that his father had the wrong dreams. Happy remains unchanged and committed to Willie's dream to be number one man. In the resolution, a grieving Linda wonders why Willie did it. She tells him she paid off the house and they're free and clear of debt. Let's talk about the characters of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. Willie Loman. Willie has become confused, often blurring past and present, and much of the play's sadness stems from watching this character struggle to fend off reality. He's lost his salary, been demoted to straight commission, and is no longer making any sales. He borrows money from his neighbor, and pending bills emphasize his failures as well as his deep disillusionment with the trajectory of his life. Willie's the father of two adult sons, Biff and Happy. Willie's own father abandoned him when he was still young, and his older brother Ben led a life of adventure in Alaska and Africa. During a trip to find his father, Willie met Dave Singleman, a successful traveling salesman, and he determined to become one himself. He hoped to gain financial success and a reputation. Frequently away from home, Willie had an affair with another woman. When his son Biff discovered his infidelity, their relationship changed forever. Willie's delusion builds as the play progresses, and he eventually commits suicide to provide his family with the payout from his life insurance policy. Linda Lohman. Linda's primary role is to support and defend her husband no matter what. She's aware of many of Willie's secrets, and she works diligently to maintain the illusion of his success. In their marriage, she allows him a level of authority and control that he doesn't enjoy in his professional life, and this makes her an equal partner in the family's delusions. Linda seems to believe that the lies are what keep Willie alive. To this end, she tries to repair the relationship between Willie and their two sons, going as far as to tell Biff that his life is in your hands. 
Biff Lohman. Biff is the Lohman's older son, 34 years old at the time of the play. As a child, Biff idolized his father and worked hard to please him, especially through his high school football career. Taking after his father, Biff as a young man valued being liked more than adhering to ethical rules, and he became a petty thief, something Willie overlooked. But the discovery of his father's infidelity caused a lifelong rift, and Biff struggles against the image of his father as a phony and a fake. Biff is also like his father in his love of the outdoors. He's not yet settled in life because business leaves him unfulfilled. Biff's desire to change, to come clean and face the realities of the past, and also to follow a different path to happiness, causes conflict with everyone else in his family, but especially with his father. And this father-son dynamic is arguably the emotional crux of the play. Happy Loman. Happy, the Loman's younger son, is a 32-year-old womanizing deceiver who shares many of his father's worst characteristics. Happy seldom presents the truth about himself, and he's driven by a desire to be superior, which means sexual conquests and infidelities that humiliate executives. Happy shows none of Biff's desire for change. Even after Willie's suicide, Happy remains committed to his father's shallow dream to come out number one man. Let's consider some of the symbols in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. Distant lands. In several of Willie's flashbacks, his brother Ben asks him to go to Alaska, a wide open land of opportunity. In the end, Ben ends up in Africa, another wild and lush location, rich by the age of 21 in Africa's diamond mines. Uncle Ben and far off geographical locations represent the material success that Willie has aspired to but not achieved. They also symbolize freedom and possibility in contrast to the confinement and death of New York City. Biff has his own symbolic pull toward the West and his dream of a cattle ranch. Both father and son experience this pull, and though Willie commits suicide with unfulfilled dreams, the play's ending suggests that Biff might succeed where his father failed. Stockings. Miller's choice of stockings is significant. During World War II, the materials used to make stockings, silk, nylon, and rayon, were rationed for the war effort, making this staple of a woman's wardrobe hard to get. This context clarifies that the gift Willie gives his lover is rare and valuable, something he can't also give to his wife. Both the silk stockings and the woman's laughter symbolize Willie Loman's betrayal and deception. They also represent the play's central rift between Willie and Biff. Seeds. The seeds symbolize Willie Loman's longing for nature, something he cannot get in his urban environment. His desire to plant seeds reveals a healthy need to nurture growth. But near the end of the play, when a delusional Willie is planting seeds in the backyard, they represent a desperate, hallucinatory effort to become successful and fruitful. Overall, Willie's character doesn't match the symbol. He fails at raising his sons, just as he has routinely failed to grow a garden without sunlight. Flute. The play begins and ends with the melody of a flute, and music is used frequently in stage directions. The sound of the flute signals to the audience that on stage the past is about to overtake the present. In the narrative of the play, Willie's father was a flute maker and salesman. Though he dragged his family across the country and abandoned them when Willie was a small boy, Willie remembers his father as a model. He tells Ben, that's just the way I'm bringing up my boys rugged, well-liked. In this way, the instrument represents a profoundly sad symbol of Willie's nostalgia, mixing his sense of abandonment with fatherhood and a longing for family connection. Let's take a look at some of the themes of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. The American Dream and Disillusionment. A key component to the American dream is the idea that financial prosperity is available to anyone who works hard enough for it. Willie Loman experiences the lie of this dream, even as he watches his brother Ben, his neighbor Charlie, and Charlie's son Bernard succeed financially. For Willie, there's also a second part to the American dream, which is social admiration for financial success. 
Willie mistakenly measures his value according to the recognition of others, and he passes this belief on to his sons. Illusion versus reality. Flashbacks confuse Willie Loman's mind, making the tension between illusion and reality central to the play's structure as well as its main character. Willie struggles to maintain the lies on which his sense of self depends, the lies that allow him to see himself as respected, well-known, well-liked, successful. He spins the facts about his sales earnings to hide his financial instability, and serial mistruths prop up the illusion of his son's successes. Central is the illusion of his fidelity to Linda, and linked to this, the illusion that his broken relationship with Biff has nothing to do with his cheating. With the exception of Biff, the entire Loman family functions under the illusions of happiness and pending success, as if to protect themselves from the hard reality that the American dream isn't universally attainable. Betrayal. As young men, Willie and his brother Ben were abandoned by their father. This first betrayal unravels Willie's idea of family and of a father's responsibility to provide emotional and material stability. Ben later abandoned Willie when he moved to Africa, and Willie also feels left out of Ben's success and wealth. Family history seems to influence Willie's own betrayals of his family. As a traveling salesman, he abandons his son for road trips, and he betrays Linda in his affair with the woman. In the end, suicide is Willie's final abandonment, but it's also ironically the only financial support he could offer. Nature versus man-made environment. In addition to Willie Loman's drive to be a successful, well-liked salesman, we also glimpse his longing for nature and a country life. Traveling allows Willie to feel a sense of freedom and participation in the natural world, even just driving through it. When feeling at his worst, Willie wishes for fresh air, a garden, and the outdoor life. Part of the play's profound sadness is Willie's belief that real success comes from working in a man-made environment, and this keeps him chained to his life in New York City and his dead-end job. Biff inherits Willie's same love of nature, as well as his inner conflict. He loves working on a farm in the West, but he's been so indoctrinated by his father's ideas that he doesn't allow himself to embrace what he most enjoys. Biff's change provides hope to the ending of this otherwise deeply sad play.